In this video, we're going to be rigging this William Optics Xenostar 61 with all the parts you see here, and we're going to turn it into something like this. And you'll be able to take pictures something like this. So with the parts seen here, we're going to put all this gear together and rig this William Optics telescope up. So let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a slow paced video, step by step, talk through all the parts necessary that how I like to rig up my telescope. Um, let's talk a little bit about the telescope first. This is my William Optics Xenostar 61 Mark II. This is exactly how it would come out of the box with the dovetail and the finder bracket here and uh, the two inch adapter here at the end of the focuser. So uh, in order to image, um, you have to have the field flattener um, for this telescope, which is the flat 61A, which is adjustable, so you can adjust this lengthwise for your back focus requirements. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and take this dew cap off here. Um, with the William Optics, they have their patented uh, Batnov mask built into the dew, uh, the uh, lens cap. And that is extendable here. This is a 61 millimeter apochromatic doublet refractor um, with a focal ratio of f5.9 and a 360 millimeter focal length. So how I usually like to rig up my telescopes, um, I like to put the guide scope on top and we're going to do some changing around with the dovetail. Um, we're going to move it backwards for a better balance. and. The first step we're going to do, uh, I'm going to break down what I have here. Um, this is the QHY Mini Guide Scope. Um, really great fit for a small rig like this. Um, it has a 130 millimeter focal length and uh, it fits really good on a small telescope like this. Of course, we have the field flattener, a, another finder shoe, which is going to come in handy in mounting our image acquisition computer and our controlling software, which is the ASI Air Pro. I absolutely love this thing, and I'll probably do a review, a full review on the ASI Air um, soon. But um, this is a compact and lightweight Raspberry Pi computer um, with its own software um, for, for mobile devices to control your whole imaging rig. And our plan is to put it somewhere right here. Um, for guiding, we're using the ASI 120mm mini um, monochrome guide camera right there, that little tiny sensor. Um, and for cameras, for our main imaging cameras, uh, we're going to use the ASI 2600MC Pro, a APS-C sized full color um, cooled astronomy camera which produces amazing images. And we're going to get into some back focus uh, situations. And we're going to be threading in the Optolong L Extreme filter. Um, first time I've put this on this telescope, so should be fun. You also have the T adapter that comes with the telescope. Um, I think you actually have to buy it separately, yes. Um, for Canon cameras or Nikon cameras if you're using a DSLR. So we're going to start off by um, taking the inch and a quarter, two inch um, adapter here off the telescope. So that's just gonna thread off. As you can see here, I've got some cabling too. So I'm really big on cable management. I wanna get everything nice and neat looking on this telescope. This is gonna be my Milky Way season wide field imaging rig, um, this Milky Way season. So I'm really excited about using this stuff on the, the prime time, uh, prime Milky Way targets this year. So we are going to start by putting the field flattener on here. We'll unscrew this. Another thing, the, the second version of the Z61 here, they added the Red Cat style of finder bracket. The original version didn't have any type of finder shoe. So this is the field flattener. 
and that's just going to screw on like this and this gives us a corrected image and a flat field. They also have a reduced version of this, like a 0.8 reducer. Um, but since this is a doublet, you have to have that field flattener for astrophotography. But this is adjustable for your back focus and filter placement. And we'll get into that for in a second. But uh, the next thing we are going to do, um, this is the focuser. It's a very nice focuser. Um, the focus lock is right here, so you just turn that down and locks the focus. But the way I like my dovetail, Vixen dovetail plate, I'm going to switch this around where I have more room to balance because this is going to be a lot of weight with the camera um, for me to balance. So we have our Allen keys here, and I'm just going to get one and take these off and reposition this dovetail bar. And the cool thing about well, the Wheeling Optics dovetail plates, um, on this side it is a Vixen style plate, whereas on the top side it's made for a Arca Swiss clamp which I utilized that back when I was using my Star Adventure. All right, these bolts are out. Here is the dovetail. We're gonna position it like that instead of that to give us a lot more balancing uh, capability. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and thread that in by hand. And make sure we get this all centered up nice and neat too and go ahead and put the other one in there if you guys have the same telescope or similar setups I hope this is enjoyable and I hope this uh, everybody has different ways of rigging up their telescopes um, it makes it a lot more compact and easier with the ASI air because you're just like you know like one big self sufficient system rather than having to run cables to a laptop it's all right there at your fingers so got that nice and centered up pretty good right here and we're just going to tighten these back down and if you guys like this video, I might do one on my RC6 Richie Crutchin telescope. So, uh, hope this video is helpful and enjoyable. I'm really excited to use this telescope. Um, I haven't used it in several months since I got the RC6. So, there is how the dovetail is on there now. So, we have a lot more room to balance now. So that's going to work out nice. So the next step, I am going to put on this additional finder uh, shoe here. Um, I purchased this separately. Um, the Z61 does not come with anything but this to, to attach things, and that's where I'm going to put the guide scope. So. Um, you can get these things for cheap. I got this from OPT uh, over a year ago. I originally got it for a red dot finder. Um, now I use it to mount the ASI Air. So you see these two Allen bolts here, Allen screws. Um, I already loosened them up, so we're just going to take those out by hand. And we're going to position this right there and we still have room, it's not going to affect our focus lock. So, I'm just going to place these screws in here like that and select a really small Allen wrench and that is a little big. Yep, that works. So, 
Gonna position that right there and get it right there in the as close as possible. And be sure not to uh, cross thread it or anything. So I got that one in, and I want to get this centered as centered up as possible. I don't want any overhang. Then we can just slip that one right there and tighten it in, and we'll just snug these up a little bit, not too tight. And there we go. Um, there is the finder shoe for the ASI Air to uh, attach to. And I just uh, put some bolts in there right there. So at this point, I am gonna go ahead and assemble the guide scope system. So um, I've already got the uh, adapter rings that came with the ASI 26, uh, 120mm Mini. And we're gonna thread that on right here. And this is a helical focuser um, guide scope here. And we are gonna pop this cap off and thread that camera right on there. This is a very cheap system for guiding. You can get this scope for about a hundred bucks um, and this camera for uh, about 150, I believe, 140 or so. Um, very inexpensive and very sensitive camera for guiding for the price. Um, and this is just the finder shoe uh, bar here and we are gonna slide that on just like that and tighten these bolts down. So we have the guide scope on there and now um, we are gonna go and go ahead and mess with the field flattener and filter so with this adjustable field flattener from William Optics um, it's adjustable so you can increase or decrease your distance for proper back focus and filter placement and uh, we're gonna go ahead and mess with that this field flattener is also rotatable so you can just loosen this uh, tension screw here and that allows you to get perfect framing on whichever your target you're shooting. Um, it allows you to get a really nice shot rather than having to unscrew certain things to rotate your camera. This is a camera rotator right here. So to put this filter in, you will hold this ring in place and then loosen the outer part to keep your proper distance. And then from there, that is your glass element for the field flattening, your, your, your field flattener. And the filter is gonna go in right there. So this is the two inch L Extreme dual narrow band imaging filter, which I have not used yet. I'm really excited about it. So we are gonna carefully just thread this in right there and then that filter is in and we're just gonna put that back over top of it you always want to make sure this dust this is a dust free as possible area so you just blow it out there with a little air blower and that's our filter. Our imaging filter is in place. And some people use filter drawers, which would be really nice. It would take place of one of the extension rings in the camera. Um, especially if you're switching uh, filters on a regular basis. But in my case, I have the L Pro and the L Extreme and I'm not gonna be switching out um, as much 
and it's not a big deal for me to unscrew this and take them out and whatnot. But now, since we have that, we're going to go ahead and get our camera set up. So, ZWO and uh, William Optics for this telescope um, and most telescopes with a field flattener require 55 millimeters of back focus to reach proper focus and have a proper flat field on your image sensor. With the ASI 2600, um, it's 55 millimeters. So the camera comes with these two extension rings. So we are going to just attach these together. And this is one 16.5 millimeter extension ring and one um, 21 millimeter. And then the camera itself already has 17 point something millimeters of back focus along with the proper setting here. And that is going to go ahead and just thread right onto the imaging train. And then from here, we can attach our camera. And we'll go ahead and do that. The beefy 2600 MC Pro, it's bigger than the, can uh, than the telescope. I love this camera. It's such a powerful imaging machine. Um, see that nice big APS-C size sensor in there. 26 megapixels backlit Sony IMX. Uh, sensor in there, very sensitive and cooled. So from here we're just going to directly thread the camera on very carefully. Which can be tricky. I usually leave the, leave the extension rings on the camera itself when I'm storing it, which makes it a lot easier because threading camera on directly like this can be a little tricky. All right, and there we have it. Then from here, we can just properly align our straight and level field of view here if we want. Tighten that back down. And there is the majority of the imaging train. Camera, extension, film flattener, guiding system and telescope. One last thing is the ASI Air Pro. Um, you guys know I do use an external ethernet cable. Um, so I usually like kind of run that around and under the scope itself and then have it attached to the mount where it's no cable drag or anything. So since we have the finder shoe on here, we can just um, directly attach that right there and there we have it guys um, that is all the gear um, for imaging um, but if you're using a DSLR you wouldn't use the extension rings you would directly thread that onto the end of the field flattener and um, then attach your DSLR like a camera lens. Um, that is if you're using a DSLR. But now, here comes the fun part. Cables. Cable management uh, is a big thing for me. I don't like dangling cables. I want them nice and neat, no snags. So we can get all this other gear out of the way. Another thing I want to look at is dew bands, which is a must. Um, not so much with the guide camera, I've never had issues with the guide scope uh, doing up or frosting up with the dew shield, but you never want your main imaging scope to frost up or dew up because it just ruins your night and basically your imaging session comes to a stop. So for this particular rig, we're going to need a cable for the guide camera to the ASI Air, a power cable from the ASI Air to the camera for its cooling capability, as well as a USB connection from the camera to the ASI Air. 
and for dew bands we'll have to uh, use a RCA to DC 12 volt adapter um, which I have here which goes into the power plugs of the ASAC Air. So the first thing I'm probably going to do is get our guide cable rigged up. So momentarily I'm going to take that off and this is not what came with the camera. This is a aftermarket nice braided uh, USB-C to USB-A um, for the guiding. Um, with this rig here with the ASI Air, I no longer use a ST4 port um, cable um, for guiding because I use the um, EQ mod cable. So to get a lot of this out of the way, I am going to wrap it around the finder shoe here, which can be a little bit of a tedious process. Some people might not like doing it this way. And I can see why, I mean, it can be a pain. But I'm gonna go ahead and take this off real quick and wrap it around. And this is where it can be time consuming getting all your cables where you want them. And you see what I'm doing here, I'm just wrapping this cable to get it out of the way around this finder bracket. And, ha and still having enough length to go to the camera. And that's good right there. I can still reach the focus lock and it's not affecting anything else. So, go ahead and put the guide scope back on. Tighten that down. Put that up there like that. Put the ASI Air back on. So, and we can plug it into the USB 2 port right there, and then plug in our guide camera just like that, all nice and tucked away. I could have probably actually done another loop right there, but it's fine. Um, that looks good to me. Next thing is the USB cable from the 2600 here, which we'll go ahead and plug in there. And I think I will we'll wrap it around up top and through here, which kind of gets it up and out of the way of any possible snags on anything. And from here, we can just wrap it around once. We can just wrap it around the bottom of the scope once. And over. Plug the guide back in. And then this will be a USB 3. So we're going to plug that in right in the bottom right there. And see how nice and clean that is? I love it. And then the next step is the power cable which is easy. It's luckily the ASI, ASI Air comes with these short power cables and long ones so you can just adjust as needed. From there this is just going to plug, I can wrap it around once here around the uh, tube and then plug it right in to the number four port or number three port right there and that looks good to me. So since we've got all this rigged up now looking all nice and neat, uh, the final step is going to be putting the dew bands on or dew band. Um, usually with this telescope I use two of these but um, it's currently being used on my RC6 right now on the guide scope. 
but I the reason this is short I messed up when I ordered these uh, I thought it would fit this but I accidentally ordered the wrong length so I usually double them up and the downside of this it has way too much cable um, so I have to wrap it around the whole body of the telescope so we're gonna go ahead and extend the dew shield here and remove the cap and you always want to place this back right behind or over the lens itself. So right there is good and that looks totally fine for me. And this is where it gets frustrating because you're going to have to wrap this whole cable around and around the optical tube and I spent like a lot of times just doing this over and over trying to get it right with the two do bands but for the most part it's not bad kind of takes away from the look of the telescope but it prevents do so that's pretty good there and when I slide it back it slides with it so it doesn't affect anything and once you slide it out it it works totally fine this is the RCA to DC adapter here it's split in case you have two like in my case on the RC6 and on here when I double these up this will plug in here and I'm probably gonna wrap this around one more time and we're gonna plug it in right here actually we'll go from underneath so we're gonna go ahead and plug that in like that and this takes some finessing to get it perfectly right which I won't spend as much time today on the tutorial but we can get this in there and that's pretty good then we can just run this up here um, to our power which we'll have to undo this real quick to fit it all right so now we can slide that back forward Then we'll just plug those back in. A very small area to work with. So, we got that all nice and tucked away. Our power cable's here, and we're just going to plug that in right here. We're going to slide our guide scope forward just a tad. And there you have it. That is our imaging rig. Not bad um, for a small refractor. Definitely looks like a good imaging rig to me. This is, uh, I mean, this is a really nice rig for um, summertime astrophotography. Any season, um, have that nice wide focal length of around 500 millimeters with the crop factor. And if you had a full frame, you would get the full 360 um, millimeter focal length. And we'll slide that dew shield and put the cap back on there. And there it is. That is the, the rig of the William Optic Xenostar 61 Mark II with the ASI 2600 MC Pro, ASI Air Pro, QHY mini guide scope and the ASI 120mm mini as well as the field flattener and the L extreme filter hope you guys have enjoyed this um, stay tuned for the next couple of videos um, the next clear night I get I'm gonna be using this exact rig to image 
a deep sky object that I've never photographed before. Uh, I may or may not use the L Extreme, but um, we're going to see how it goes using this rig this summer with the 2600. I've never used this camera on summertime targets yet, so cannot wait to see what these things look like with this rig here. So that's all I've got for you today. As always, give me a like, share, subscribe, and uh, I want to thank you guys so much for the views, definitely in the last video. Um, and I hope to continue to grow this channel and give good content to you guys. Comment down below if you want to see a rigging video for the RC6, because that's a very complicated telescope. And the ways that you have to rig it up differently for that type of imaging, that long focal length. So, alright guys, as always, thank you for watching Astro Pilot, and until next time, clear skies.